Okay, so I'm half Chinese. My mother is Chinese. She was born in Canada. And my okay. father's Jamaican, so he's born down there. Okay, yeah. yeah. So now they said martial arts needs to be in this lineage. This man child must have a martial art. Is are you handing that off? No, does your kid have to like know how to strike and stuff before he Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I don't know, he's only uh, two months old, but I've seen him throw some punches. I think it's definitely in his blood. <laughs>like dude it's like my honor to have you like you guys are big dogs you're doing great things so Thank just to be able to just to just talk about that is pretty cool i will say it's um it's amazing to see how much the fitness community in general has just come together yes um i think we talked a little bit last night about uh, an injury that i saw um pretty early on in the first stages of this pandemic where i was doing some um live one hour classes on ig and my knee went, you know, something crazy, I think, just from all the jumping around uh, yes. in the apartment on these concrete floors. And um, anyways, I was injured and I thought I had to sort of like just pump the brakes. And the fellow instructor who actually teaches at a competing gym, uh, who I'm friends with, reached out and said, hey, I will be your body. So we split the screen just like we oh, are right yeah. now. And I taught um, and she kind of just demoed for me. And that was like... <laughs> It was amazing, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. She just jumped in, and uh, and do that for me, you know, without even I didn't ask her, um, but was so grateful for it. Yes, absolutely. The market I think we feel is saturated sometimes because there's so many boxing gyms or Pilates studios. Yeah, it does come down to personality. Um, people will come back for your customer service, your professionalism, and just like your vibe overall. Like, just profile yourself for a minute. Okay. Uh, the short answer right now, as it stands, I'm one of the founding instructors for Drop Boxing, which is one of the newest um, fitness boxing boutiques in the city. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> My wife in center here. I just like spilled oh, some coffee. My wife's just like, what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yo, that, dude, that's, uh, this is life, man. It's all good. Right? It's, it's yeah. messy. Um, so what that means was I was, um, I want to say I played a huge role in just uh, bringing everything together. Uh, Lara Marquez being the um, co-owner and the brains behind it. She, uh, she had gone down to New York and experienced Rumble Boxing. If you're not familiar, check them out. Okay. Huge franchise. They're like blowing up in the U.S. They have um, gyms in some of the biggest cities and they're doing really well. Anyway, okay. so she took that concept and wanted to bring it back home to Toronto. And she assembled a team of fitness professionals and, um, you know, other people within the health and wellness industry and we formed this team and we sort of put together what classes rumble style classes would be like in Toronto, right? In okay. terms of the flavor, um, format and everything. So I was a huge role in that. Um, and then I was given the opportunity to partner with philosophy fitness. Um, Phil Orwin, that's where I do my personal training. Um, and he came to me a few years ago and asked me what I would like to do with the downstairs uh, space. We had a bunch of offices um, that he wanted to renovate. I said, give me a boxing studio, please, nice. please, please, please. We grew that over the course of a couple of years. And um, January 1 of this year, we opened North Boxing. Uh, okay. And I'm taking the reins on that. So I'm the manager. Um, it's my baby. You know what Amazing. I mean? So really excited. In the first two months, we reached, and I don't remember what the numbers were. I know we reached... 70% capacity in our first two months, um, which yeah. is amazing. Kind of got a head start because it was an existing boxing and we had kickboxing programs in place yes. and we yep. just upgraded to a bigger, better, better space. So Perfect. Because you know, yeah. the price is very competitive. Okay. But um, I feel like it always goes back to that saying, like you get what you pay for. Yes. Um, and, uh, and I think that's what's hard for people to understand. Somebody that walks into... I'll use them as an example because they're down the street from us. Nine rounds and they pay X amount per month. Uh, and this is what they get. Uh, and then prices almost, you know, in a way double come to a boutique studio. But I think my experience and the experience of my colleagues will speak for itself. You know, we've been in the game a long time. Um, and just the overall experience from the time you walk in the door, you're greeted by your first name. It's just the overall customer 
service experience and the sense of community. You know what I mean? You're not uh, yes. just a number. Um, not like a somebody turn walking burn into, I won't say the name. Exactly. You're not walking into one of those big box gyms who I don't have to name. Because um, that, that's been my experience too, walking into some of those bigger gyms. Yes. Um, it's kind of lonely. You know what I mean? You don't mm-hmm. feel that sense of community. For yeah. some people that works, but, uh, you know, even as a martial artist, as a boxer and kickboxer, I've always felt like I was a part of the team, although I yes. competed on my own, you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, you always had a group of people around you to support you. So mm-hmm. I think that's the major difference, the sense of community uh, and the level of service and quality you get. What's that? Right. Nice. So what's your actual like, martial arts background? Uh, it goes back, I think I started martial arts at six years old, um, starting with Korean karate. It's called Tang Sudo. I don't think there's any more existing schools in the city. Okay. Um, and that started because I am uh, one half Chinese, and it was like, okay. and my grandfather <laughs> told my mother, like, yes. 100%, yeah. he needs to learn some martial arts. So, uh, it's gone from there. I had been with that school for a few years they closed um and then the next nearest location was just way too far my mom to this day still doesn't have a car she doesn't drive i did a few years of japanese karate um like shotokan if you're familiar um judo at all pardon me any judo no judo unfortunately and it wasn't actually until um i want to say my late teens Mm -hmm. just as ufc was like Pick it up steam here in uh, in Canada and in Toronto, where I started grappling, doing some Brazilian jiu-jitsu, okay. mostly for fun because my buddies were all into it. And them being bigger guys would just put me in a headlock and I'd be like, okay, okay I'm like, yeah. this is yeah. out of my scope. I'm a striker, you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you, when you grabbed me, I wouldn't know what to do. So I started practicing, taking some classes and just uh, and self-taught in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but aside from that, I've been a member of, Twin Dragon, Kung Fu and Kickboxing for, oh my God, more than 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Since Very before cool. my teens, uh, competed with them, taught with them, uh, coached and been a cornerman for a lot of their fighters over the years. Yeah. Sort of on and off. My mom is an instructor there, so it kind of runs oh, the cool. family. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she still teaches their kids program, well, not currently with all that's going on, but um, up until the pandemic, she was teaching kids programs think three yes. days a week you know she's kind of yeah. like the, the right hand woman for sure yeah sometimes it's like you get that um just that push in that direction because it's handed down from either your mother or your father right yeah um, yeah, yeah. yeah and I've, I've definitely seen people um coming from similar um bloodlines where like their father and their father's father were boxers or kickboxers but um, you know, although a lot of people come up with some talent, I feel like nothing beats hard work overall. Mm-hmm. You know okay. what I mean? Have that eye where you can see, like you're saying, someone whose father was a kickboxer or whatever is in their line. Can you just see by the way that they move, like it's a more natural movement or just like there, there's more of an intuition? I couldn't peg it if it was, uh, you know, something that ran in the family, but I can definitely tell, even somebody that's told me, uh, you know, they're new to this. Like, I can see when somebody's got a gift of coordination. And sorry, guys, but a lot of times it's women. Yeah. Women that have never, like, fought before. You know, maybe they were dancers that, like, have some other complementary skill set. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, wow, it's it's amazing what some, some of these athletes can do. Uh, yeah, just, like, yeah. you know, with that transfer of skills. Um, right. And then on the other hand, it's funny, I come across a lot of very athletic men and women uh, who are really good in their respective sports, like um, football or volleyball. Uh, you get the gloves on them, and they just don't know how to move. They're so I, Yeah, I, I get that, because it's, it's like a movement, like for a punch, it doesn't start with your arm, right? Like it starts with your hips, or it starts with that pivot, or it starts with your foot, or it starts somewhere else exactly. than where you think it would start. Exactly. And I think because it's so, it's unilateral, you know what I mean? So as yes. I throw my dominant hand, I pivot with the leg on the same side. That yes. doesn't feel natural or comfortable to a lot of people that are used right, to right, going right. contralateral, right? Okay, so I'm half Chinese. My mother is Chinese. She was born in Canada. And my okay. father's Jamaican. So he's born down there. Okay, yeah. yeah. So now they said martial arts needs to be in this lineage. This man-child must have a martial arts. 
is are you handing that off? No, does your kid have to like know how to strike and stuff before he Hundred percent, hundred percent. I don't know. He's only uh, two months old, but I've seen him throw some punches. I think it's definitely in his blood. It's in his nature. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm gonna try to be the type of parent that just uh, exposes my son to as much as possible. Yeah. Um, I've said this to only a handful of people, but I'll say it on air right now. But uh, if I could go back 20 years and do anything differently, I may have become a dancer, to be honest with you. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, because it uh, checks a lot of the same boxes for me. You have to be disciplined. It's a lot of hard yes. work, coordination. Yeah. You get to move. Uh, and I love yeah. rhythm and music. So uh, One of the guys I had on the show last week, Fabrice, uh, if you get a chance to go back and look, uh, he's a guy in France, applies instructor. Uh -huh. strongest dude like he moves like incredibly and he was a he was a went to Alvin Ailey uh in New York City he traveled and yeah. and you know and you can see just the way he moves it's such a strength and the grace and uh, like you're like okay yo this is like this is cool man like this guy really and he where he trains he teaches now at um his Pilates studio is attached to like a martial arts studio oh amazing. so you know, so with that now, he never actually took any martial arts, but obviously he could he could do anything, right? Because his body is so mobile and strong. I can see that. There's a lot of parallel skills, right? Exactly. Well said. You know, and you see, as a trainer, you see that too. Like I say that when I'm working with um, certain athletes, and there's certain sports that even the sports aren't parallel, the mm -hmm. training methodology is parallel. For example, yeah. um, I've had like high-level squash guys like Ontario junior junior champion stuff like that and I actually train them the way I would train my football players interesting because if you think about the both sports they're both like stop start sports where like yes. you go from zero down set hut 100 miles an hour seven seconds later the play is done and then you reset squash yes. you get the ball you start your rally you go hard for 10 11 seconds you stop get back to the box reset and go again so even though you're using different muscles, it's similar energy systems. Exactly. It's all anaerobic. It's very similar to what I do in boxing, kickboxing. Um, and that's interesting. I have an example because I think it was five or six years ago, I had uh, my first K1 fight. So slightly different rules than um, kind of Western style kickboxing and that you could throw leg kicks, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But at the same time, was trying to PR on my half marathon time. I so you see where I went wrong. Like <laughs> yes. two totally different skill sets, energy systems, and yes. I didn't perform well in, in either one of those. Either, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty guaranteed. What are you doing with your online classes right now? As your uh, boxing studio sits idle. Right now, just trying to be consistent. I think we, I talked to you about this the other day and like, I'm very happy that things are going steady. I've got a couple mm -hmm. classes on Zoom and I'm still offering some uh, short, like 30 minute uh, express classes via IG. Just to, yes. you know what, it started as a way to give back to my city. Just keep people yes. with Toronto, you know, happy and sane. Um, and then I realized, you know, I could monetize it. And, and people had mentioned that to me saying that they would pay you know what they could or what they wanted yes. and, I, and i appreciated that um and it's it's helped me slowly funnel some people over to the full hour paid classes on zoom but right now it's just about maintaining um and keeping in sight that we, we are in a pandemic and yes. this is just the short term i think what a lot of people are doing is they're really gung-ho about this online thing and they think this is going to be the new future reality but you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think after us being in isolation for what looks like a couple yeah. of months, we're all going to jump on the first opportunity to go back to a gym, go outside and train, hit an actual bag instead of shadow boxing. So I think, right. um, you know, really going hard with this online uh, training right now is kind of a short term goal. Like it's not going to last. It'll fizzle out. Spinning off of uh, North Boxing because I had a really popular class, uh, just a boxing class. I branded it as Box and Balance, which is really um, the best way to describe my style, right? Okay. A mixture of, you know, traditional boxing, strength and conditioning training uh, with a little bit of flair. So a little bit of dancing and like a rhythmic aspect. And yeah, I think yeah. that's really picked up. Um, I do want to do a better job at connecting the two. Um, and I wanted to do like live classes on North, but because 
we open on January 1st. The following there isn't as big or as strong as like my current one that I've been building yes. my personal brand for years. And I, you know, and yes. I'm, I'm gonna point fingers because I've been telling other trainers, fitness nodes, RMTs, other therapists that I know that someday you're gonna wish that you started building your following. And, and here's yes. why, you know, in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the early days of this pandemic, again, like when I was just doing these free hour classes, like people reached out, they wanted to, to give, and it's because I've given so much uh, content and so much of my knowledge through my Instagram and, and, and just in life in general, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you sold seeds for years. Yes, exactly. And and that's yeah. a great analogy that you use. You know, I planted seeds over several years and now like these, they're just blossoming. Things are coming to fruition for me. So yeah. I'm feeling really good about that. No, that's, that's good, man. And like, and that's one of the questions that I always have, like for myself and for you now too, is we have so many parallel passions, right? Like you said, like dancing and like martial arts and boxing and, and personal training. And then you're being a dad and like all these different yeah. things at the same time. You want to like, yeah do well in all of them how do you marry all of these things how do you connect all these things in, in a way that i'm know? gonna give you the most like cliche answer uh yep. like my wife is gonna laugh it's just like be yourself and make sure that everything you do is a reflection of who you truly are yep. so like to your point like don't spread yourself too thin and try to do all these different things mm -hmm. find it find what it is boil it down to what it is that you love to do, find a way to do that and then make money. You know, yep. for me, it just happens to be, you know, teaching boxing because it, it allows me to help people move, um, yep. stay active and healthy. I get to play music and be a wannabe DJ. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, yes. So all these different things that I love to do in this melting pot, which just yep. for me happens to be being a boxing instructor in Toronto. But for somebody else, it could be, knitting hats for cats, whatever makes you happy. Cause then you're right. passionate about it. Um, before this pandemic, my, a, an average day for me, before my son, before having a newborn, yes. meant waking up at 4.30 in the morning, being there to teach a class or work with clients at 6 a.m. Uh, yeah. for like five or six hours straight, maybe having like a midday break, breaking my mm -hmm. fast because I, I fast intermittently well I used to uh and then going on to teach more classes in the evening or see clients so my my days didn't end until sometimes like 9 p.m so yeah, they were long yeah. days like looking back comparing them what's comparing those days to what they are now Insane, I spent a man. lot of hours yeah it's yeah, and my wife reminds me she's like you need to cut yourself some slack like you you work hard you know what I mean mm -hmm. um you do what a lot of people aren't willing to do but it never really bothered me, you know? Right. Because yeah. I love doing it. I got excited to get up and and, yes. and greet 20 smiling faces at 6 a.m. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's what I no, recommend people do. Absolutely. I, I agree with that 100%. Because if it gives you energy, then do it, so, you know? And you know, my days look exactly like yours. And, and I always say, like, I run it like that, but at the same time, I could stop it on a dime. Like if I need, like my kids have like a football game or like a basketball game or something in the middle of the day, I'm like, okay, you know, chop it off. I'm just going to go do that and come back or I'm going to spend a day with them. I'm working as hard as I want to work. Yeah. You know, I'm working on my terms. So if I want to run 14 hour days and then shut it completely down on a weekend, I can do that. If I want to run eight days a week for six months and then stop, I can do that. You know what I mean? Like, you find exactly. what works for you when you're working within your passion. Yeah. It's, yeah. I will say, um, it can take a little while. It's, it's great. Um, it took me, I've been full-time fitness, I want to say for four, three years. Okay. Full-time, like no, no other, I can do some side hustles. Like I, I wanted to launch an activewear brand that kind of got put on the back burner, things like that. But, been been able to survive and make a comfortable living for the last like three years you know that included yes. buying our first car getting married which yeah i don't have to tell you how much that costs getting married and then like starting our family and like moving several times and and right. things like that but it took me i will say i like i want to put this in a perspective perspective it took me a long time to like take that leap and decide i'm not gonna have a, a 35 hour a week job working like whatever like I worked yeah. front desk for another gym for like 
five years and I had like a couple of classes here and there because that's what I really wanted to do. Focusing on my passion and and yeah, it, over the course of like two years, it really did, it started to blow up and, you know, it was making these leaps that I didn't think I could make. And I think this is where I was bringing it back to. I finally got the opportunity to do things I couldn't do before, like take weekends off, you know what I mean? Yes. Where I had to work that, you know, let's call it nine to five, Monday to Friday, weekends, Friday, weekends, I was mm -hmm. teaching classes from like seven or 8 a.m. to whenever, yes. you know what I mean? So I just, for any, like, up-and-coming trainers, I don't want to give you the impression that, like, it's, I'll work whenever I want to work. It's, like, take the work while it's there. And yes. then when you're comfortable, make those sacrifices for your family because they always come mm -hmm. first. So, yeah. you know, if you got to drop a few clients in an evening to go to your, uh, your child's football game, do it. Mm -hmm. It's worth mm -hmm. it. You know? Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. sorry, well, sorry, reverse Aaron. We spend so much time working in the business that we don't spend enough time working on the business. Ah, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if I'm working like 50 hours a week in the business at the desk, training my clients, at the, and I never take a step back to actually look at where I'm going and to map mm -hmm. out where I want to be next, like we're gonna be just on this wheel. Even in the thing we love, we're gonna, we're gonna burn ourselves out. You know, because like. I don't know about you, man, but like if I have like five clients in a day, six clients in a day, my seventh client is not getting the same quality as my first client. It can happen, but I feel like, you know, uh, you know, with the experience, there are ways to um, help prevent that. Um, Absolutely. I'm speaking at a different age, but like, you know, coffee helps, number one, but yes. definitely like planning because I, I, you know, even five years ago, I was in a different position where I did feel like I was burning out between like client one and client six let's say mm -hmm. um so i can't stress this enough it's all about planning uh, i wasn't great at that in the beginning but it, it does pay off and i learned that i think the hard way mentors we'll talk about mentors in a second but one of the guys oh, yeah. that i had one of the guys that i i worked with a long time ago used to say to me he looked me like dead in the eye and be like you are not a personal trainer you are a business owner and your product happens to be fitness Mm -hmm. Well said. So, so that's to shift, like too. you know, like shift your mindset from like I'm, I'm, I'm a Pilates guy or I'm a fitness guy or whatever it is to like, no, I'm a business owner. My product is this, and the principles that I I take here, the way that I treat people, the way that I handle my finances and all those different things, I can turn around and sell, you know, like hats, and it could be the like cats for yeah. you know hats for cats, right? Like whatever, yeah. and. And in the same way, take those same principles and run it, right? So that shifted my mindset and helped me to run my business in a way that like, I am now a business owner and this is my product instead of I'm the guy in the trenches and I'm just gonna yeah. train eight in a row and call it a day, pat myself You're right, back, you right? get stuck in that mindset. And you know, what I thought you meant before is like, sometimes like you're there, but you're not in the business. Like you're not present in it. And yes. you just get st stuck thinking that you have to grind 24 yes. seven, like seven days a week. Yeah. Um, and yeah, again, like that's not sustainable and you want to be thinking sort of outside the business, like you said, and I feel like the best way to, to keep yourself in check is having like a mentor, like a fellow mm -hmm. colleague that you check in with. That's been super helpful uh, to me, you know, um, one mentor definitely being Phil or Wayne saying like, looking at me uh, after a, a double six and seven a.m. boxing classes where I'm dripping from every pore and he's like, Maybe maybe you need to take tomorrow off. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. making calls like that. Um and probably ten out of ten times I turned to him and said, Yeah, you're right. Uh, it depends on your circumstances. Like if if you got a lot of uh bills and like you're just barely scraping by, I get the sense of urgency to like grab every dollar you can, every class you can. But you know, for all those like up and coming trainers at any age, let me tell you you will all burn out. Doesn't matter how old you are, 21, 31, 41, you know, rest. Yes. Um, just like we tell our clients, don't train every day. You need at least one of those rest days. Yeah, exactly, man. And that's, and that's becoming like the, the trend now in training. People are starting to say more like recovery is training. Like your work is only as good as your rest. Like 100%. all of these lines, man. Like, so like, you know, we have to like look at that as like, you know, my recovery day is my training day. This is all part of the master plan. You know, so, um, yeah, that's, that's key, man. So uh, that's good yeah. that you're sending that message. <laughs> Funny, man. All right, you want to get your Pilates on, man? Yeah, please. I got my mat here and everything. 
Nice. Ab curl, come up just a little bit higher. And just hold up in that ab curl. All right. Oh, now wow. Lower your, that is different. Now, I'm already... Yeah, yeah. Now, lower your hands down so they're just above your hips. Ooh. So you look, in, look at me there. So hip height. There. So now looking into your belly, start to do a small pump with your arms. So this is your first exercise, your hundreds. Oh, I've heard of these. Ah, yes. So as we inhale, inhale for five pumps, exhale for five. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale. So normally you do this for 100 reps. We're not going to do that right now. But what I want you to do is extend your legs out to a 45-degree angle. So legs are straight out now. Squeeze those heels together like you got a $100 bill between your heels. Yeah, that's my line. Yeah, nice. So reach those toes across the room, still pumping. Okay, and then bring your knees in and rest. Ooh. So now your legs can go straight out. Your second exercise will be your roll up. So legs are just resting on the mat, heels together. Reach your hands all the way back. And now you're gonna sit straight up. And then reach forward towards your toes. And then as you roll back down, think of connecting one bone at a time into the mat. So connect, roll, down, down, down. Nice, we'll just do two more of those. So exhale to come up. And roll down under control. Oh, there you go. Last one. And this really tells the tale of where the person's body is, right? Like, can you get that small of your back just above your tailbone to Ooh. connect before your upper back does? So you're just connecting one vertebrae at a time on the way down. Oh, yeah, I see. That's hard. Yeah, so then that's the articulation through your low back there, right? So I'll I spend like tons of time with my athletes on that just so they can just find that little sticky spot and just work through that. Amazing. Okay, so then now lift your right leg up in the air. Point those toes and just do a small circle. Okay. Keep going. See this mortar and pestle? Yeah. That's, okay, so that's your thigh bone and your hip socket. So stir from that thigh Sorry, bone. Sorry, you're breaking up. Okay. okay, so that's your, that's your thigh bone and your hip socket. There. Okay, nice. change direction. Sorry, same legs, just different same, direction. Yes, same leg, different direction. And now we're going to switch legs. Nice. So it's pointed. Now let's just go for three in each direction. Three, switch. Two, three. And now bring both knees into your chest. And then roll yourself up to a seated position. Okay, so now next one is you're rolling like a ball. So hands are on your shins. Lift your feet off the floor just to find that balance point. Okay, so now chins to your chest, and I want you to do a roll back and come up to this position, but start the roll from your stomach. So you're going to pull into your core and then breathe out to come back oh, up wow. to find that balance point. Hold, nice. Whoa. Inhale to roll. Exhale, come back up. Nice. Let's do two more. Last one. Okay, hold right here. And up. Nice. Just take that. So now place your hands on your right knee and then lie all the way down. Okay. So now your head and shoulders are up, so you're looking to your belly. So you're going to stay in this ab curl here. And now switch your legs. Grab the other leg. And switch. Switch. So this is called your ab series of five. So there's five exercises that we're going to do as we switch. 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 Now pull both knees to your chest. Head and shoulders stay up. And now reach both legs out at the same time and your arms back at the same time. So head and shoulders are off the mat. Arms are reaching back. Head there. And then pull your knees into your chest. Circle your arms around and place them on your shins. Nice. Reach your hands to the ceiling. 
reach your legs all the way out, reach those arms all the way back and around. So let's do three of those fast now. So reach out, circle around and in. And two, reach out and around. Last one, reach out and around. Nice. Keep your head and shoulders up as you lift both legs up in the air. Now grab onto your right leg as high as you can on that leg. Nice. You got good mobility there. Sweet. And then give that leg two pulls. So pull, pull, switch. Pull, pull, switch. Yep. Nice. Last one. Other side. Keep those legs up in the air and take your hands behind your head. There. And now lower your legs down, but like think of reaching them out the window, really reaching for length, and then lift them back up to a ceiling. There you go. A little straighter on those legs. So lower. Almost lock them out as you're reaching for the ceiling on the way back up. Straight up, up, up. Nice. Last one. Lower. Kind of like I'm handing you a mug of coffee and then pouring it out to the side. So that's the pattern of the punch, but we're going to add a snap. And you're pivoting on the same side. So if you're throwing your left jab, left foot pivoting on the toes. One. One. Nice. One. As fast as that hand goes out, pull it right back. One. Coming off that jab, which is the most important punch because it measures distance, it'll tell you yeah. where your target is, is your number two punch. We call it okay. a straight in conventional boxing. Some people call it a cross. So off your dominant hand, throw another straight punch right down the middle. So let's see a one. Jab off the front hand. Straight. Good. Keeping your head, your head centered right now over your spine. One, two. Perfect. Same target. Excellent. More emphasis on that back heel. Lift it up. Spin on those toes. Yeah. Next, we've got the three and four, the money shots, your hooks. So after your number two, we alternate back to that front hand. We're going to lift your elbow up to about shoulder height. I think of it as putting up a shield. Elbow okay. in line with the wrist, wrist in line with the shoulder. I put that shield up. I can go palm down or palm face to my nose. And I need to stop with my wrist in line with my nose. That way I don't overthrow. This is your number three punch. We call it lead hook or front hook. Three, a little bit more pivot, bend the knees and sit your weight down. Like I tell the kids, like you've got a heavy Gucci belt on, back. Excellent. Now off that back or dominant hand, give me your number four back or rear hook. Same thing, try to get your forearm parallel to the floor. Make same thing like stopping in front like a chin sort of thing? With your wrist in line with the nose. Yeah, if I wear my okay. watch, I say watch in line with the nose. That way you're training your body to not overthrow. You want to make yes. contact with the target and penetrate a few inches. Let's put those three fours together. Front hook, back hook. Let's see a three four. Three four. Remember, forearms parallel to the floor. Stack your wrist in line with your elbow, elbow in line with the shoulder. Excellent. At 90 degrees. Last but not least, we got the uppercuts, the five and six, my favorite punches, because I'm only five, six. From your guard, you're going to dip. So bend the, bend the legs, lower your torso so your elbow comes closer to your hip on the same side. From this lower position, and I'll face the phone so the number see. five, that dip and drive off that front and non-dominant hand. So I'm just going to bend to sorry, 90 degrees. question on that. So yeah. when I'm dipping, I'm dipping, which way am I dipping? Like Towards the, the hip on the same side. So don't focus on the rotation. That's a little okay. bit more advanced. Yeah, literally, if you're throwing your left uppercut, lower that left elbow down towards your left hip. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Part of why I don't add in the rotation is because right there, you're going to bring your head off your center line, yes. possibly over to your left line, which is great that you have that intuition. It's not wrong. But for mm -hmm. a lot of beginners, they won't know that they're doing it, and they won't know how to recover from that. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. then it just throws off the next sequence or punches to come in the combination, right? So yes, for now, yes. keep it very centered, dip and drive. Number five, sort of down and up, kind of like you're shoveling, dip, drive, number five. And then from the back, this is my favorite punch, the number six, back uppercut. I call it the Reese Witherspoon because we're going to bend and snap like in Legally Blonde. Bend and snap. Perfect. All right, so last minute here, I'm going to make you work. Okay. We're going to go back to the straight punches. I'll call them out. So when I say one, two, one, I want your jab, your straight, and your jab. All okay, right? Cool. Yeah. Let's see. One, two, one. One, two, one. Let's see if we can reverse it. Two, one, two. 
Starting off the backhand. A little bit more rotation. There we go. Your number two is your longest punch. Now let me see your first three punches in order. One, two, three. Jab straight front hook. Excellent. One, two, three. Remember, stop with that wrist in line with your nose. Keep okay. your balance. Now let's see if we can add a double jab. That's a jab. You're going to pull it back. Jab again. One, one. One, one. Now add the two. One, one, two. Palms down, one, one, two. Heels up, one, one, two. Spin, pivot, one, one, two. Switch that two for a four, one, one, four. Oh, uh, yeah. Back, <laughs> one, one. Back hook number four. Now let's do the first four punches in order. One, two, three, four. Jab, straight, hook, hook. Remember, keep your arms bent at 90 degrees when you throw those hooks. Perfect. Now your bottom four punches, three, four, five, six. Front hook, back hook, dip and drive, number five. Okay. Front uppercut, bend and snap, back uppercut. Excellent. Keep those knees bent, hips down, arms bent at 90 degrees. Uh, All right, last 20 seconds. We're going to run the six for the city, Toronto. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't forget to use your legs on the uppercuts. Let's go. Jab straight, hook, hook, up, up. Reset. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Run it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ten seconds fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's a quick learner, man. Athletes, man. Amazing. I hope you enjoyed it, man. I hope you'll uh, take a full half hour class so I can make, make you work, do some burpees. Yes, please. See, that's the thing, man. Like, on a <laughs> boxing classes where they maybe do burpees bother me because I'm like, let me learn technique, man. I want to learn how to do those fives and sixes, man. I know how to do a burpee already. It's true, but it is definitely part of the training, right? Going back to like that concept of stopping and starting, those yeah. short bursts, right? But uh, no, I get it. And if you ever want like uh, a longer breakdown, I'll, I'll send you over a video. I should put one together. Just like really, like yeah. you said, like doing that prep work, how you had me do the retraction of the shoulder blades and protraction. We can do the same thing with each individual punch and sort of you can see the trajectory. And then your, um, the way you'll execute it is slightly different than everyone, right? Sure. Sure. Um, some people like that coffee analogy. Some mm -hmm. people don't want to pour out their coffee, right? They think of catching a fly and then pulling it back or grabbing an apple, yes. pulling it back to their face, right? Nice, so, nice, nice, nice. Billion different ways to break it down. And yeah. I love, but see, both of us did it. We both had like our stage boys as soon as like, okay, okay, time to go. And then. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, I definitely got to thank uh, Lara Marquez from Job Boxing for that. Yeah. Um, the way she would put it is like, you got to become, you got to go from Beyonce to like Sasha Fierce, right? Yes. Like your stage presence needs to yep. be there. You know what I mean? That's, that's what people come for. That's what they pay for. So yeah. You got to give it to them. All right, man. Thank you for your time, man. It was a great conversation. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm going to, I'll, I'll repost, I'll send you, um, I'll, I'll edit it and I'll just put everything up. And then, Please. um, core conversations. I put a, a group page together on Facebook as well. So Amazing. people can interact with you there. Um, okay. Put, actually, if you could, that'd be great, man. Put together a video with just like the same. Everyone's got a boxing video out there, but like no one has your boxing video yet. So put that up there, Thank and you. it'll it'll be a perfect setup for people coming to your classes and see what you do on live. Because yeah. like I love your style, like all those analogies, like that. All this stuff's <laughs> solid, man. That was good. That was really. Thank good. you. Thank you. Awesome, man. Okay, enjoy your climb, man. We'll talk. Thank you, man. Be well.